Good afternoon, Pastor David. Hey, John. Welcome, everybody, to Unfiltered. Uh, Pastor, you know, yesterday at the end of Romans chapter 1, we're in the end of the study, uh, there was, uh, we had a conversation afterwards about the sway of the world. And, and in your study, you mentioned uh, how creation has an understanding, and we were chit-chatting a little bit about that. But as we're walking back to your office yesterday, we, you were sharing a little bit more about developing the sway of the world. And, and one of the things that I find interesting, in the name of Christianity, there has been this acceptance of tolerance within the church. Mm -hmm. And this can range from uh, gender, transgender homosexuality, uh, it, it, drinking, drug use. It can range a variety of different things but a lot of times these people are saying it's in the name of love. Christ is love, and we talked a little bit about this before. Christ is love, God is love, love is peace. Therefore, we need to be tolerant of everything and anything. And how has that crept into the church and corrupted the true love of Christ? It seems to me that this attitude of, uh, of placing tolerance as you know, the eleventh commandment, if you will, is um, is it just lacks a, a biblical basis. You know, on the one hand, the new virtue it seems to me that is uh, promulgated and has been for some time. John is is this attitude or this idea that that tolerance is is a uh, high moral quality and that people who really know what love is are going to you know, tolerate people, even if these people aren't living up to the standards that perhaps that individual who's watching them has for themselves, or even line up with what Scripture says concerning um, the world and, and the influence of the enemy and all of the things right. that pertain to, to how we think and how we act. And so over the years, tolerance has become one of those um, words that seems to broad brush to the point where you accept everything, mm -hmm. and in doing so, you are very tolerant. When in fact, the most tolerant people on the face of the planet are actual Christians because we are, we, we are people who can live in the midst of evil and, uh, and not be harsh and not be judgmental. We are actually tolerating in a, in a certain sense uh, what is taking place without, you know, reaching out and attacking and and uh, you know, maligning or being vicious, we we have an attitude of uh, uh, hating the sin but loving the sinner. So, of all people on the face of the earth, though that would be something contrary to what a lot of people think, John, we we have a tendency of tolerating or putting up with things because we know that unless this person's heart is changed by the gospel and unless they have God's Holy Spirit empowering them. What they do is what they're going to by nature do, mm -hmm. right? And so <clears throat> when the church begins to kowtow to the modern morality and, and modern definition of what Christianity is, that's where we have our problems. Because you can love and you can care, but not accept what's being mm -hmm. done. And so, you know, of all people, we look into Scripture and we see, you know, um, we see Lot and Lot's in Sodom and Gomorrah, and he's not only there, but he's actually risen to a certain position within the city and all. And uh, yet, we're told in Scripture that his righteous soul was grieved constantly by the evil that was surrounding him. So, we live in a world that lies under the sway of the wicked mm -hmm. one. We know that the enemy is the one who is energizing people to evil deeds because it is their nature. And, um, and we're not there making judgments of these people. We're loving them enough to tell them the truth. Mm -hmm. And so the question has to be asked, so when did telling the truth become a hate crime? You know, we, we, have, a, we have a group of intellectuals and, and philosophers who would say that you're forbidden to use certain words because it causes certain people to feel bad about themselves. It's just a slow erosion of what the society actually at one time was capable of doing, which is policing itself mm -hmm. through the use of words and expressions that were able to communicate 
a certain position or a feeling that you had. And now they're saying you can't even call a man a man or a woman a woman. I just was looking at some new definitions. So uh, a woman is supposed to be somebody who is an egg bearer, and the man is supposed to be somebody who has the capacity of producing sperm. I mean, that's how crazy our society has become. They don't even want to say man or woman. And so are we to tolerate that? Are we supposed to say, okay, you can have my mind. You can tell me how to think and what to say because that's appropriate, therefore I tolerate that. Or are we people who say, you know, I'm not about to be brainwashed by your, by your craziness, to right. be honest with you. And, <laughs> excuse me, so today um, there's much confusion about what, what love is. And I think part of the reason is because we have failed to actually... Uh, recognize the biblical definition of love and the various aspects or words that in the New Testament at least refer to love for what it is. And so, you know, love speaks the truth. We are to speak the truth in love. Love, God is love. Love became incarnate. Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, showed us what love is. So if you want to see how love acts, just look at Jesus mm -hmm. Christ in Matthew 23. Just look at the things that would cause him to be irate. Look at the things that he would say as it was pertaining to his message and, and the response of people to it and all. And you'll get a more balanced view of what it means to love and what it means to tolerate. Mm -hmm. And we got just a, about a minute left, Pastor. Uh, there's postmodern approach in love versus the biblical love of Jesus Christ. It always seems like there's this battle going on between that. And, uh, and the, you know, this postmodern view is tolerant, acceptable, you know, uh, you never want to ruffle the feathers. But you mentioned it briefly yesterday and uh, in terms of the Super Bowl commercial that, you know, it's okay for somebody to spend, have a yacht of $500 million, but to spend an ad on Christianity. Again, there's that postmodern thinking that you, the Christians have to be weak, you have to be submissive, and you cannot speak your, your, your voice. Yeah, that's crazy, to be honest with you. Yeah, somebody has a $500 million yacht, and people applaud him because he's chosen to have the best of the best. But when people put on a commercial to reach the multiple millions of people to at least encourage them to investigate the claims of Christ, oh, yes, there's this outrage. Oh, that money could have been spent on, and everybody has a, an idea of how Christians are supposed to spend <laughs> their money. Because when it's all said and done, the, uh, the unbeliever thinks the message of the gospel is mm, foolishness. Mm -hmm. And so what you're doing is you're spending money on something that really doesn't matter. When in fact, you know, if, if a person is not influenced by commercials, then you have to wonder, why did they charge so much for 30 <laughs> right. seconds, right? $7 million for 30 seconds. If they actually believe that that really were true, that that we don't influence people through commercials, through visual things, then why would you spend your money on that? It just has always been wacky to me. It's always been, it, it, it makes absolutely no sense. And so I do pray that the Lord will use uh, even that, that uh, commercial, those two commercials, and right. I do in the Super Bowl, I do pray that it causes people, you remember uh, to think, you remember when John 3.16, that fellow oh, yeah. would be up During, there? Yes, yes. People didn't even know what John 3.16 is, but many started looking to see what it is. You know, where'd that come from? Oh, that's in the Bible. What's it say? So it caused the conversation to take place. It caused people to actually investigate or hear. So I think something like that, uh, preferably, will have an impact. And so, yeah, um, I, I, I can't take my cues. You, we as believers from the world, you know, because the world would... Well, the world crucified Christ. Yes. They, they're not interested in his message. And uh, so because it is under the, the ruler of this age, you know, and it's the sway comes from the enemy and the flesh is attracted to those things, we have to speak the truth Amen. in love. Amen. Well, I want to invite you guys to come out this Sunday uh, to join us for our 830 and 1045 services as you're taking us through the book of Mark. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it's going to be, I was looking at your notes, it's gonna be a good study. And so I wanna invite you guys to come out uh, to join us for that. And then those that are going to Israel, after second service, we have 
our last meeting with Inspired Travel. Mm -hmm. It's going to be in the sanctuary. And then all servants, all the servants that serve in our church in any capacity, we have a ministry morning, which is February 25th, on a Saturday at 9 a.m. with Pastor David. I uh, would love to have you guys out and join us. That would be great. And so thank you guys for tuning in. Pastor, thank you so much for spending time with of us. Of course. God bless you guys.